Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze and reviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind the scenes videos and two minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. What up, bitch talkers? Here we are, Zooming once again. Two years. Are we two years in now? Uh, we're basic bitching via Zoom uh, before we head into Sundance because that's coming up basically tomorrow. Uh, we're recording on Tuesday the 18th, say the 18th of January, y'all. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, I think we can give a little tease. We just came off of a really, really what we think is a good interview. I don't know what anyone else is going to think. But we just we're a little bit on cloud nine. We've been working towards getting this interview for a few months. And we finally did with the manager of the San Francisco Giants, Gabe Kapler. And it was just it was so good. And he's doing real good work in the community. So I uh, feel like he was everything we expected and more of him. I think it was a really fun interview and full of substance and Uh, and he's just a really good person. So i um, really excited to share that with people, but I'm feeling just like, like you said, just real happy right now. <laughs> we needed that for 2022. Oh, for sure. yeah, for... We needed, we needed a, not that we haven't had good interviews, but just like, I don't know, this one was different. It was no, different. this was, you know, uh, when we, you know, how we've had others where we are just like, Oh, is that, did we do that right? Like, yes. how did that, how did that go? What do you, and we're like, when there, you feel terrible, like after we, an interview. we get off of the zoom and the three of us are like left in the room and going, what, what do was you it mean? good? Or was it what not? Yeah. Like, this one, all of us were <laughs> or just, like, I blacked out. Like, yeah, I, I, I totally don't remember anything. <laughs> Gabe, is, Gabe is just such a cool dude. So we could have been on the phone with him for ever. You know, like he, he, he probably would have hung out with us for another 20 minutes. I definitely think <laughs> especially so. and, especially when you started talking about hip hop. I had Yeah, to. I, I think he was just real grounding, like real, just real easy to talk to and, and real relaxed. And Sorry, everybody that you're not going to be able to hear this for a yeah. month, but <laughs> it's fine. Whatever. They had to- but, we're, but anyway, just, moving we're coming on. off Good. of the glow of, uh, yeah. of what is, I mean, like it was very much, I think for all three of us, a very much a, like a, 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 Div- a Davy Diggs moment where all of us were just kind of like, don't stare too hard at the Zoom screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what, what I was saying was he was saying just really deep, insightful things. So it made it easy to just kind of forget that he's very good looking and, you know, listen to what he has to say as well. So. Okay. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> if, if you don't know Pipeline for Change, please check it out. We talked a lot about that with him. It's his nonprofit that he started not that long ago. Um, and, and we talk about that and, and of course, other things, some baseball related, um, and some personal related, but, uh, that was, I think that was, was that our first interview of 2022? It was, so it's a good one to start off on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If this is the uh, first one that aired in 2022, but the first one that we recorded, right. right. Our first recorded interview 2022. Yeah. If that's Um, a, if that's a precedent for what we're, if if, if that's the, if that's what we have to look forward to for the rest of the year, I'm, I'm, I think we're all good. Yeah. I, this is great. Um, but yeah, I just mentioned it earlier. We're starting Sundance basically tomorrow and uh, have a ton of films to watch. Ange has basically watched them all already, I think, um, and has given her commentary. <laughs> and, and you always get ahead of the game when it comes to this stuff. I don't you know, know how why? you do it. Because this is also why I read all of my emails. I cannot function otherwise. If I have something that I need to do, I can't just not do it. You know what I mean? Like we had, what is it? We have four films. We had links, two of them we might not even get interviews for, but I wanted to watch them anyway. And I've signed up for 25 films for Sundance. And I was like, if I can get 
five of them out right now. Why wouldn't I do that now instead of right. waiting to rush? And then I have to get my questions up. You know what I mean? I just like, I do it so I don't have to rush. I function better that way. And I had time because I'm living in leisure world. So, so you know, right. what else am I going to do? True. <laughs> Um, I, it made me think about our friend, um, John Wildman, who we're teaming up with again this year for, for Sundance. So you're going to start hearing his voice, uh, on some of these interviews coming up. Um, but, uh, he was talking, you know, he's a publicist for film festivals year round and he does, he said he has got 18 film festivals this year. And he says that he watches like, what is it? A dozen movies for each festival or something like, could you imagine having to do that year round where all you're doing is just like freaking just like absorbing movies i'm like i wonder what his film count of of movies that he's seen you know for a mean? year well also he's like saving animals the whole time and yeah. also a farm somehow. and taking care of his mom right and, yes <clears throat> and, and being separated from his his wife while she takes care of her mom like, <laughs> right. like yeah superhero status but the thing is he doesn't just watch them either because I feel like a lot of people half watch things and half are on their phone. Right. For he sure. like when we go to this is why I love doing interviews with John. When we go, he's just like has all these thoughts on this and that. Like he really pays attention to the storyline, the characters, the, the cinematography, the colors. The You know what I mean? Like he, he doesn't just you know, sit and, and, and stare at his phone while these movies are on. So yeah, I don't know how he does it. But. Yeah. And, and I was going to say, too, we also have Slam Dance, which adds to our plate of films. Um, and Slam Dance is the very, very indie, indie, uh, what, cousin in law of Sundance. Right. <laughs> say. So um, in normal times, uh, and we, if you've heard it, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but if you're new to the podcast, um, Slam Dance and Sundance kind of run in parallel. And we're doing both festivals at the same time. So we're doing that again virtually. Um, but it's going to be interesting because we're still booking stuff as we're going. <laughs> so oh, it's, it's for the huge, yeah. I guess. I mean, this is going to be, you know, we this will be our fourth year covering uh, Slam Dance right. Sundance. Uh, and we're 50-50 for in-person and virtual. Um, if you've heard the ones from 2019 and 2020, um, we actually were broadcasting from Slam Dance headquarters, although we were doing, you know, both Slam Dance and Sundance Film Fest uh, festivals at the same time. And um, so now we're just kind of doing it in a Zoom room, just like everything else. Just like everything else. Everything else in the last two years coming on. What is it? 22 months. Something like that. Oh, is it 22 months in 2022 yeah. of the pandemic? Oh, isn't that fitting? Um, another episode uh, that will be coming out around February 4th is um, it's a film that Angie and I saw at South by Southwest last year, virtually, obviously. Um, and it's called Who We Are, A Chronicle of Racism in America. And Angie and I had a very deep conversation with the filmmakers and the main subject of the film. And uh, the film's actually finally coming out. Um, I think it's out in a few places, maybe New York right now, maybe LA, but I know it opens uh, a little more widely and in the Bay Area starting February 4th. So uh, we were lucky enough to catch them again, uh, I think in December, right, Char? We saw them. Yeah. November, December. That was no, that was December. In person. That was December because we went to the Fairmont and there was right. the uh, gingerbread house. Yes. And very expensive split of champagne <laughs> that we split. Um, and when I say split, I mean the small bottles, you guys, not just split. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. We, didn't, we didn't split a big champagne bottle. We no, split, we split a split. <laughs> we split a split. So basically a glass each. But um, we interviewed the directors again, as well as Jeffrey Robinson, who's the main subject in person. It was great to see them. And so we're going to roll that interview out uh, starting uh, February 4th. So excited about that. I, I think I'm going to post a lot about that film coming out because it's just real... <laughs> just hits the nail on the head. So yeah, I'm really excited about this film hitting the major public because every time I talk to somebody about 
anything in regards to race. I'm like, I can't say it as well as this film. <laughs> right. Express it. And I just want to be like, watch this fucking movie. And you know, people aren't going to read and they're not going to do this and that, but they'll watch a movie. Yeah. Especially one as captivating as this one. So I feel like it's just, it, if anybody has an, has a question about something that I can't, I can't <laughs> explain proficiently. It's just like, turn to this film. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. I, and I, I'm still thinking about it. And always that was one of the uh after the you know after uh the recording after the recorder stopped when we were with uh in, when we were you know in person with them uh was it the assistant one of the workers on the film was telling us it's the hardest part is one of the hardest challenges was just getting people to watch the film because it's such a good film and everybody is you know they, they watch and they go this is fantastic but it's getting people to you know watch a film that's called you know yeah who we are chronicling chronicling the racism in america yeah right but then once you watch it you're just like oh holy shit this is so good and so i i think you know it's part of our mission to make sure we can get as many you know as many eyeballs as we can yeah in front of it Shar, it was the um the actually the director of the nonprofit that's working with Jeffrey Robinson right for our project mm-hmm. yeah and she's like yeah it's just hard to tell people to sit down for two hours and watch this film and then <laughs> when they do they get it so um, we're telling you now please put on your calendars go support it if you're not feeling comfortable going into theaters I'm gonna guess that it's gonna be streaming really soon so um look out for it um what else. You escaped a tsunami. I'm surprised you haven't <laughs> brought that up yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, over the weekend, the MLK weekend, um, this was planned a while ago with our neighbors who are sadly going to be leaving this year. Um, but they wanted to go up to one of our favorite places up in the, on the coast called the Andiron. And, um, my bridal party, gave uh jeff and i i should have just used it for myself but it was for me and jeff (laughs) um a gift certificate to go up there and so we were able to spend um three nights up at the andiron and one of the mornings we woke up and jeff got a text from a friend like watch out for this tsunami and we're like what are you even talking about (laughs) and so we ended up going up to fort bragg and and kind of sitting on the, the the bluffs up there the pomo bluffs and just watch the the sea be angry. It was really cool. Um, but we weren't sure. No, there were no like tsunami warnings up there. We heard they were all in, uh, in Santa Cruz, but you could tell the ocean was like churning pretty hard. Cause we're like, are these, these waves have to be tsunami waves. Like the, just the way that they were crashing and mm-hmm. how big they were, it was crazy. So yeah. And I was like, well, just tell Gabe Kapler, I'm a big fan. Cause I'm, we might die by tsunami now. <laughs> Hello, 2022. Thank you. Well, well, the thing about those waves is because all of the all of the beaches along the West Coast were closed that day. But maybe the waves are one foot, maybe they're two feet, but you don't see what's going on underneath. Like that one foot wave can fucking suck you in. Right. And with the waves as choppy as they were, you, you can't come back, you know, w- without assisted help. So everyone was like, oh, the waves aren't that big. It's overreacting. But it's like, no, you don't understand like what's going on underneath. Like you yeah. can just so easily be sucked in, even if you were up to maybe your knees in the water. That's so, why we were on the bluffs. We yeah. did not go on the beach. <laughs> we were up above. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, yeah. glad you had a little getaway and Thanks. you came home safely. I hung out with the purse. Of course Our you good did. Friend who's yeah, tsunami. Show. Yeah, no wonder why there was <laughs> oh, a tsunami. Now it all makes sense. Yeah, now it makes sense. Uh, fucking well, Richard. Well, you know, as we as we said in the last episode, I lost my dog, and uh, the good friend he is, he was like, "I'm coming to see you," and so Aww. he did. He came to see me, and we hung out. We had a great time. Went to uh, a couple of my favorite dive spots that were um, nice and quiet because it was during the daytime. Oh, good. Um, yeah. And uh, I had a little catch up with the curse. You How's he doing? Disneyland. <laughs> he, as soon as I got to his car, he was like, I'm checking to see if we can go to Disneyland right now because we both have passes, but we have the cheap ones and they were blacked out. <laughs> yeah. But he's but, good. Yeah. He's good. He's, you know, 
he he kind of resents being called the curse. I'll just say it. I'm sorry, Richard, but seriously, Look, he does every time he doesn't mind a nickname, but he doesn't understand why you really believe it's true. Um. And I don't really believe that he's a curse. I don't because he's like one of my best friends and he gives me such peace and calm whenever I'm with him. It just so happens that, you know, some things happen, a, a string of events happened within a two month period or three month period from Richard, like November to January. Richard, like, I don't think you're a curse. You found Angie's phone when we thought it was gone for Disneyland. You, but <laughs> right after you had a big old piece of glass in your fucking drink. <laughs> So yeah, so maybe I mean, it balances out. It's a know. loving curse, maybe. Yeah, it's <laughs> loving, totally loving. <laughs> but uh, I yeah. love Richard. He's great. He's yeah. Great. So um, so I I had a good time catching up with him. And uh, if he was a really good friend, he would have donated to our uh, Tony Larusa's ARF uh, thing we're doing in in memory of Bailey right now. Oh, Thanks, yeah. Richard. Well, I've been, I've been, I, I did notice that Audrey, your Darling, nephew did, who is our, oh, of course he did Audrey Darling, who is uh, our hair stylist. She was does our fir- hair was the first to comment and she loved Bailey. Everyone Aww. at that salon loved Bailey. So that was really sweet. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, you can go to our Instagram and you can donate. Uh, we have till the end of the month. We're only trying to raise a couple hundred bucks. So um, there, people are giving on Facebook too. So it's just hard because then you can't match it all up, but, um, Bailey's in our hearts and she was actually, there was a Bailey at our, so the andiron. Yes. We should, we should just do a bitch talk and iron trip because they do this. I love the people that own it. Um, uh, Madeline and Scott and, um, traditionally when in the before times, they would always have happy hours on the weekends, like Friday and Saturdays for folks in the lobby. And these people know how to decorate very kitschy. Like every room is themed. Like we were in play and make this last weekend, but they have read and write and um, they're just really cool rooms. And so uh, you'd have a happy hour in the lobby. They used to do like um, uh, raclette, not the kind of raclette I have Ange, but like a mm. smaller version of it. And you do, you, you know, do cheese, you melt cheese and do all this stuff. So now they built out cause their, their property is pretty big. They built out a whole outdoor happy hour situation. So we're sitting around fire pits and we're spaced and they serve you. They'll do like a specialty cocktail. They'll do beer and wine, um, for like an hour, hour and a half. And you just sit there and get to know the other people that are staying there. And then, so there was a Bailey, um, Bailey dog. Yes. And she was so sweet. And I was just like, Bailey's here. And then, you know, we have another friend that's moving to Tennessee like this week. And there was a couple from Tennessee there and I'm like, okay, life. Sure. Wow. Is that, it's kind of right. Ra- I mean, it's not random, but you know, just, just life being life. And it was, it was sweet. So that is funny because I, I, I forgot to mention, I also uh, hung out with another friend that has been on Bitch Talk before. Her name is Kim um, and she uh, teaches yoga classes. Oh. I, I hung out with her earlier in the week and we went into this crystal shop because I wanted to get a, a rose quartz for Bailey. Yeah. And we were there for like half an hour. And then all of a sudden when I go to pay, this little white dog comes <gasps> up. And just beelines for me. Like we're both standing there. This little dog comes up and oh. this is like shaking and I'm just petting it. And it's like giving me all this love. And I swear it was like because Bailey was a small little white dog. And she was like, it's Bailey saying hi. <laughs> it was just really funny because we we're both standing there. But the dog just like beelined to me and was like, what's up? Give me love. And, and just like Aww. was nuzzling me. And it was so sweet. Yeah. She's around. And I, I forgot to say before, Bailey's the reason kind of that you got your dog, Will Clark Jr. Jr. Do you remember when I first came back to San Francisco, which was 2015, you came over and you're petting Bailey and you were like, no, because oh, I, I got him in 2014. I got him in 2014. Well, maybe it was in 2014 when I was maybe rarely. Yeah. Because you were like, I want to get a dog if it's a dog like Bailey. And you did. You got a little white <laughs> Chihuahua mixed dog. But I remember you petting Bailey and saying like, I yeah. want to get a dog. I want it to be like Bailey. And then and then you had Will. And I got, and I got Will. And you gave birth to Will. <laughs> well, not really. That'd be weird. Um, yeah. Yes. Anyway. But yeah. um, 
yeah, it's just, just a, a fun weekend and God, I, yeah, we have to go up together because the best fish and chips is in Fort Bragg. It's mm. at sea pals, the best. I'm not kidding. Jeff and I are like, we've, there's nowhere else that makes fish and chips like this. And then my favorite beanie that I wear a lot, princess seafood. Um, it's, you know, all women, I think I've talked about on bitch talk, all women run, um, boat basically in the Harbor, Noyo Harbor and Fort Bragg. So they have two spots. Now they actually opened up their own restaurant, which is awesome. And then they have like a market deli where you can get fresh fish or smoked fish or whatever, but I just, we love, we love them. So Mm. had had some good seafood this weekend. Uh, I saw a char, you're in bodega speaking of. Uh, yeah, I went to bodega, went uh, crabbing on Friday. What do you mean? Oh. You crabbing? You went Jesus. on a boat? Jesus. No, I, I you do. I, <laughs> or is this uh, your first time? No, I've been a couple of times before. Oh, um, of course. Although my brother, my brother did the boat thing, which was way, well, I don't know. The result is way better than, well, I, I don't know. You, uh, which is better. You pay 145 bucks to go on a boat in Half Moon Bay. You get off and you've got 10 giant size ju- Dungeness crabs. But all Do you do- catch them? Or- yeah. Oh, sorry. Go yeah. So all you're doing is pulling the traps in with the, oh. with the fishermen. You're so basically you- free help, but you're paying. You're paying. But you get, but then you get to walk out with the maximum amount of crab. Okay. And so, and uh, we like, uh, well, my brother, like this was like last month, uh, came home. He went with his coworkers and he came home uh, to, like 10 like freaking giant sized crabs that we all feasted on you know we mm. steamed we steamed them fist, uh, and 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 feasted on them that night and had a crab feed at our house um uh crabbing in bodega bay or half moon bay or wherever you gotta do like you're a fisherman right you get the trap you get the crab trap and you put the crab meat. Are you over. wearing like the boots with the like pants and the suspenders? I don't have the big <laughs> suspenders, but I've got the boots. I've got the rubber boots and fun. You, know, you get the you got the the, the crab trap that the, the the crab walks in and can't get out. And uh, <laughs> uh, and it's Dungeness grab season right now. So uh, you put you know, you have a little pouch that you put like whatever bait you want. We had like chicken and salmon, raw salmon and all that. And then you find a deep spot in the rocks and dip your trap into it. And you hope that a crab comes in and gets trapped. And then you got some crab and we got like four crab. And, and what do you have to pay? You pay for the, 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 um, to rent the cage or, well, you, uh, because if you go multiple times, you, you got a guy, well, you can't rent. I mean, I guess you could rent it. I've never known to rent it. It's like fishing poles. You, you, you have, have your, your own crab cage. I have my own little, I've known you for this many years and I've right. never this known is my, actually, this is my first season. Uh, I, I fit, uh, like I go fishing with family and stuff like that. I've been oh, fishing. Thanks for, let- <gasps> thanks for letting us kid. know. I want to learn how to fish. I've oh, never I'm, been crabbing. That's, that's my favorite thing to do when I was a little kid going fishing in uh, Rio Vista. Uh, oh, where my Delta. mom yeah. oh. Um, oh, oh, You and, never and I, invite us to anything, I, I went, yeah, I went deep sea fishing as a kid and got freaking didn't, that's when I learned that I'm deliriously seasick when it comes to deep sea like deep water oh <laughs> mm. but you know like we went on a when we did that like what my brother did with crabbing we went on a boat and caught like 50 pounds of fish or something like that and then wow we, we ate like uh i think it was rock cod for like <laughs> a year <laughs> oh in the freezer <laughs> yeah Just exactly like, you want rock cod again sure um but um but yeah the i have a the the little nylon net and I have a little steel cage and I got the little traps and, <laughs> and all that and let's that go thing. what the fuck yeah well, I, it's, it, it's you have to be very it. patient but then and so I went with my mom I'm patient I went with my mom and we dipped our thing and uh we oh uh, we uh, went to uh, one of the oyster companies nearby which and, one um do you remember we just found a new one crap, it's, I forgot it's uh I forgot the name of it it's fine it's, it's in Bodega Bay but we, we, you know, uh, bought like a couple dozen oysters. And so while we mm-hmm. dipped our, while we dipped our trap and waited for, you know, crab the to crab. hopefully come in there, we barbecued, uh, 
we barbecued some oysters. Oh my God, this is so Dude, cute. That sounds really fun. Can yeah. I come? And then I and then I went to, and then <laughs> I went to the great season end? <laughs> soon. Of I think course. In middle to, j- January or something. To balance the peace of oh, the You guys uh, went to the nature. Casino. You had to yeah. go to the casino. Well, it's on the way. You passed I know. It, you you know. went to well, Grant, not Grand Sierra. What is it? Uh, Grayton. Grayton. Grayton, yeah. Wait, but okay, so uh, Dungeness Crab season is over at the end of this month. Is I that thought what? so. Uh, it might or is be it February? February, February or March. And I was going to say the next time you come up, we could just go up to the coast and get some seafood and hang. Well, that too, but I also, I want to crab, crab, uh, catch. Dancing, dancing crab I mean, I will crab dance as when, I catch crabs. I know you will. When it's not Dungeness crab, you can still crab, but you'll get like the rock crab or the, with the ones with the big claws. I'll show oh. you the pictures. Cause we only caught like, um, uh, I don't know if I have pictures of them all. We only caught one Dungeness crab and we caught like three rock crab. <laughs> And are those you give them back or no, you uh, you can keep them. Oh, they are uh, they have to be of a certain size, too. Yes. I agree uh, so with that. like so you have like a little <laughs> there's like a little measure, like it's like mm-hmm. a little a ruler. It looks like a ruler that could fit the crab inside of it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then the once you put thing. it in. Yeah. And then once yes. you put the crab in there, it, if it doesn't go past the lines, you got to throw it back. That's okay. fair. Well, now we're learning new things about. I, I got a good. Uh, this is this is a, this is an interesting question that I could bring up to you guys, um, because as a Filipino, uh, Asian person, this would never have occurred to me when my brother went on his on his crabbing trip. He came home with ten live, full fledged bodies of crabs that were crawling <sighs> and yeah. moving. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, they and, scream right. Uh, a little bit, but th- he was showing me a video of the fishermen on the boat chopping the crabs, like s- splitting them in half. And like, basically, it looks like a paper cutter for for crab. And they cut them in half, rip the rip the guts and the let and then pull the legs and then the just the body out and then put that in the side. And then you got to take 10 of those home. If okay. you, and, and my brother was like, uh. I think my family would not like me if I just came <laughs> home with gutted crap. I, I was like, I, I got it. And so he was, so he said that he got off the boat with his nine other friends, his nine coworkers. And he was the only one carrying two bags full of live crab that are like trying to crawl <laughs> out of the bag. And these guys are like two bags of like dead cut up shit. Well, like, dude, Getting the full crab, that's the way to go, right? <laughs> I thought yeah, so. And, and, and people then, people like the the I mean, do they call it the fog fog of crab? Yeah, like the, right. The yeah. The brain you suck stuff. it out. You that's suck the, that, that right. brain. Or you can, the bomb. Yeah, and you can dip your bread in that shit. Right. Bourdain used to do it. It's the very, oh, that was his favorite thing at a yeah, very Filipino Asian thing to the, do. And mm-hmm. I re- and, and so the, this my whole thing is that every Buddy, every Asian I go that I know, I'm like, hey, check this out. And I show the video that my brother showed me. I was like, these people paid $150 to go on a boat. And this is what they were taking. Oh, yeah. Half crabs. That's just like we go to this place in L.A. It's called the Boiling Crab. And you get like bags right. of shrimp. And they're like all seasoned with the corn and the sausage and the potatoes. You eat on the plate or you eat, or eat on the and table. You eat on the table. You got a bib. And I'm like sucking the heads and everyone's looking at me and I'm like, that's the most delicious part. I don't know. You, you got to suck the brain. I don't understand. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, what are you eating? You yeah. could be at like Sizzler right now I, with what you <laughs> I, I told my cousin about it. And then my cousin was just like, my dad would be so disappointed if I came home with no body of crab he goes he goes the crab would dry out when you steam it and <laughs> like that's this, a good point too and there's, yep. no, there's no sauce and there's no nothing yeah Juice. yeah that's weird agree okay, white white people if you're listening why do you do that um <laughs> <laughs> anyways that was like a white person thing. that was that was my day in bodega bay that's awesome yeah we just went up there last weekend um and i had a good good half crab is delicious uh yeah and hurry up and come up here would you i'm going to if we All right. have like five million films to watch and cover, i know but okay I, I could come up one evs 
Okay. We've got a lot more time now, but um, after we're I, done with f- uh, film festivals, I think after Sundance and Slam Dance, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, are, good. are we going to do a moment of pleasure? Yeah, I'm down. Let's do a moment of pleasure. Is all of ours going to be Gabe Kaplan? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think we should stray from. Yeah, no, no, no. I'll <laughs> I'll I'll start. Uh, actually, um, just being by the ocean this last weekend was a lot of different moments of pleasure and. Uh, we let the, let the dogs off leash on a beach, obviously not when there was a tsunami. Um, and they just, they're, they're not like, they don't run wild, but it was cute to just see them like walk around and sniff in and made them walk around, walk over like this running water thing going in the ocean. It was so cute. They both like, they're really scared. And then they did it. And you know how Koki walks. She's like on high yeah. heels basically and like <laughs> high healing it it's over like these little rivers. A wind it, blowing could knock yes, her over. Exactly. Aww. But she, she was brave and did it, but it was just nice to be by the water. And uh, we took one back home for most of the way from up there. And it's just like, Ooh, nice. it's gorgeous. So mm-hmm. um, that's my moment of pleasure. Nice. Um, I'll go with, uh, I'll go sports related and just say that, um, um, to balance out the nature, I spent time watching football and I watched Nickelodeon football. I was seeing that posted. You, I don't know what that means. You and um, Angie's friend Cato were posting about the Nickelodeon football. So stuff. what they did. Uh, so um, my well, so my moment of pleasure is I'm happy that you know the 49ers are having another you know run at the playoffs um, and doing right by Jimmy Garoppolo because I feel like they're gonna get rid of him after this and I love him. Mm. He's another he's another nice one to look at. He's very oh. good looking. Um, but uh the only thing i know about <laughs> <laughs> but anyways uh but i watched uh the uh sunday was the um uh 49ers wild card game and while we were watching it uh my nephew schmutz was just like are we watching the nickelodeon wild card game i don't know how he knows this uh, maybe from his <laughs> youtube channels or whatever but we were like what are you talking about and uh come to find out nickelodeon had its own special broadcast of the wild card game between the Niners and the, and the, and the Cowboys on Nickelodeon that had their own uh, announcers that were, I guess, a little bit more kid friendly. So it's not so technical and so sportsy and all the graphics and everything were Nickelodeon themed like slime. So like when the Niners scored a touchdown, the, there was slime all over the, the end zone. And when they hit, <laughs> when they hit, when they kicked the field goal, they put SpongeBob square pants in the middle <laughs> in between the goalposts. So you know where it goes. I'd watch that. And, I loved SpongeBob back in the day. And yeah. And then like when there were, when uh, the refs were like saying, Oh, there's a penalty or this is what happened or, you know, doing some kind of um, like explanation, like, young Sheldon, I guess that's a, a CBS uh, or Nickel- yeah. Nickelodeon thing popped up and he would explain the rules like, well, this is what he means when he says, you know, offsides. And so like the kids were like oh, learning, that. the kids were like learning <laughs> about football and the kids were like, the kids were super, at first they were just like, I, when I first walked inside the house, uh, they were, I, they were like, you want to go outside and fly the drone? And I'm like, no, I want to no. sit here and, <laughs> uh, start eating this chicken. I just brought over and start watching football. And the, and then, um, when we said we were, we're going to start watching, uh, Nickelodeon football, they were just like, oh, check out this. Who's going to get slimed. I want a slime head, you know, like all that kind of stuff. And so they actually, it was more of us as opposed to them, like us baby finding something to babysit them while we watched the football game, they got to so we got to you know have some togetherness. You get to them. watch it together, right? Hmm. So that was kind that's of that's so smart. So yeah, smart why didn't they do that? Like you know when we were kids. Yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> so my my uh, moment of pleasure was when I was hanging out with um, my friend Kim. We went into that uh, crystal shop and they had tarot cards and they asked, they, they were like, oh, pick a tarot card. <gasps> she picked one that was like perfect for her, but I'm not going to share her yeah. business. But mine, I'm just going to read really quickly. I picked the manatee and it says 
accept the situation as it is rather than fighting to change it. So, you know, I've been going through a lot of shit this past year and fighting a lot of stuff really, to be honest, and trying to control everything and, and like, I can save everyone. And you know what I mean? So um, I feel like this was really a card I needed to, to pull in that moment. And I'm just going to paraphrase some things. It says um, lay down your sword, not in defeat or in self-sacrifice, but from a realization that this isn't the fight you want or need to engage in. As the saying goes, choose your battles, let go of your righteousness and your ego's need for control <laughs> And find that peace of mind that you so cherish and have available simply by choosing it. And um, honestly, since I picked that card, I've been a lot more at peace. And I think mm -hmm. I just kind of needed to hear that, that I don't need to fight everything, that I don't need to be in charge of everything, that I can just kind of choose to be at peace with whatever's happening and make it the best I can. And so, yeah, that's been my, that's my moment of pleasure. Right. Let's end on that. That's beautiful. And I love that for you. You, you needed that card. <laughs> Crazy, yeah, right? For sure. Right. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Ange. And now let's go get some seafood guys. Um, I'm coming. <laughs> we just have 54 <laughs> films to watch. Yeah. Let's, let's watch that in 24 <laughs> hours and then just come up. Um, no, uh, we're excited and uh, we're going to be busy for the next week and a half or so, but we're going to be turning out some good stuff. And then like we said at the beginning, we're going to have stuff coming up in February already ready so just you know subscribe already maybe write a comment maybe rate us how about those things thanks um yeah i don't know what else to say toodaloo if you like what you hear rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts for more information about us you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com this podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions. <laughs> <laughs>